Hola, ¿qué pasa, campeones? We are live, I assume. I just clicked the live button a little bit, anticipate a little bit too quick, but that's okay because I'm a little bit late as well. 9.47 a.m. Central European time. It is on the clock, and here is Diego with the spot reporting once more for Barça Blaugranes coming at you live this morning from Barcelona to give you guys the latest on Barça. Of course, we're going to talk about Barça, Las Palmas, or Las Palmas Barça, I should say. And we're going to be looking ahead of this juicy, mouth-watering clash, barça Aleti ahead over the weekend, okay? Uh, as per usual, I want you guys to drop in your comments in the comment section below. I'm expecting you guys to be blowing up right now, okay? Blowing up the comment section because... We have a lot to talk about. I'm expecting a lot of you guys to be livid. I'm very disappointed as well. Worried, I guess you could start saying as well. Okay, I see Nitigia, I see Mohamed, the loyals, the Barça Blaugranes, the spot loyals uh, already in the comment section. Let me know where you guys are watching from as well so I have an idea just where you guys are positioned globally. Uh, always fascinating. Give me the thumbs up. Give me all your emojis, everything you want. We're going to get into this right now. I hope you guys have a better morning than me. I'll explain to you why in just a second. And let's do this. My bad. I'm going to do that again. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, for all those new here, for all those new here to this platform, usually that little intro is accompanied by a super, super, super dope ass song. By the way, check out my little clip on mic. Big shout out to David Garri Sports uh, for hooking, him, hooking a man up with the clip on mic. That's right. Getting professional, guys. Getting organized. Getting professional. What? Professionals. Ah, it's what it's all about. Anyways, once more, top of the morning to all you lads. I see. Ah, I see it now. I see you guys blowing up the chat. I see. Uh, Asunama also joining in the chat saying, Greetings, watching from Germany. Nitigia saying, I'm in India, but what a shit game it was. What a shit game it was. By the way, I'm expecting, and this is the first time I'm uh, using this clip on mic, I'm assuming that the sound quality is better than ever, what? So let me know if it is, because I would appreciate that. Uh, Mohamed is saying, I'm so pissed off with Valverde right now. Um, Mohamed as well saying, good morning from Ghana. Man, we got people from Germany, we got people from India, Ghana, all over the place. Joining me in Barcelona, Diego D-Spot, on this fine morning to talk Barca. So without any further ado, let's get right into the mix of things because I'm kicking this off a little bit late. I'm 20 minutes late now. And uh, let me get, me give you a little bit of sense of what I have been dealing with. Uh, I've been, my wife's Fitbit, she wears a Fitbit, said that we or she got a, a two hour and 43 minute sleep this morning. So I think that's generous. I think either she slept a little bit more than me and she's lying you lied to me. All the times I said that I love you. Because I think I got about an hour and a half sleep last night. The wind here in Barcelona is going around about 120 kilometers an hour. And it's whistling in our ears like, I mean, there's a tornado in our goddamn living room. We live in a very small flat. Uh, and when the wind kicks in, that shit sounds like, I mean, it's like, It's like, who put the kettle on? Oh, what? We get it. You put the kettle on. That shit whistles in my ear all night long. And then it says the cracking. I mean, it sounds like our apartment is just going to lift off up in the sky at any moment in time. Now, of course, that's okay. We're adults. We can deal with it. But <laughs> our not yet turned three-year-old son next month. 
uh, also hears that and it means that he doesn't sleep a lick, boy. He doesn't sleep anything. So he hears the whistling too. He obviously wants to sleep with mama and papa. And uh, God bless the guy who invented the big bad wolf and the three little pigs. Esos terditos, man. Those three little pigs. I don't know if it's Disney or whoever it is that came up with that cuento, with that fairy tale. But thank you. Because now every time the wind blows and we hear that. <whistles> my son thinks that it's the big bad wolf trying to blow our goddamn house down. And we have to spend the entire night telling him, no baby, it's all good. Just go to sleep. It's all good. It's no big bad wolf. It's no such things. It's goddamn big bad wolf. Except for the goddamn big bad forest. But it's all good. That's why we do it, right? We love it. We love it. All right, enough of that. Enough of your pity uh, or my pity, <laughs> my pity chat. Let's get on to the game. I see you guys are eager, talking only match things. So match things first. Mira, look, I said it before when everybody said, oh, Luis Suarez should have picked up a yellow. And oh, it's just Las Palmas. I said, esto es un partido de trampa. This is a game, uh, a, a trick. This is un partido de trampa, coño, like a, a tricky game. This game has got mm, not victory written all over it. I was scared leading up to this game that this could be one of those midweek weird fucking Thursday, you know, 9 a.m. or 9, 9 p.m. kickoff time, midweek. Obviously, the minds are already uh, thinking ahead of the Atletico, thinking ahead of probably Chelsea. They're thinking, God, man, we got to fly over to Las Palmas when it was it's snowing. It was snowing here. Then the, the temperature went up 16 degrees. They would fly over to Las Palmas, see what's going on over there. Mad rain over there. Uh, months, like, <laughs> I mean, Cascadas, waterfalls were overflowing in Gran Canarias, in Gran Canaria. Anyways, just a bad, bad omen that this match had leading up to it in my opinion, and my conclusion is Mateo de la Oz was bad, was very bad, but Barca was, 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 was much worse, okay? Barca was much worse, and I know we can sit here, and we're going to do that. We're going to sit here and pick apart uh, la Oz's mistakes because we have to, because they were uh, detrimental to us. Uh, it, there were determining, you know, the, the determining mistakes in the sense that it allowed Las Palmas to get back into a game uh, in which they probably shouldn't. Uh, in a game where Barca played bad, but probably could and should have taken the three points. Now, let's start with the first point. Chichizola. Chichizola. Las Palmas goalkeeper. All right? Chichizola. I like saying that. It makes me happy. So I'm going to continue saying that because it makes me feel good. Chichi Zola, Las Palmas goalkeeper, Chichi Zola should have gotten sent off. Okay? There's absolutely no doubt about it. Everybody in the stadium, everybody and their grandmas at home on the, watching it on the television set, everybody all the way here in Barcelona, around the world. Uh, I'm talking to you on Suma in Germany. I'm talking to you, Mohammed in Ghana. I'm talking to you guys uh, Nitiga in India, everybody saw it, that was a deliberate handball, should have been a booking, red card, a la calle, chichizola. Everybody saw that except for Mateo de la Oz. interesting that, interesting that it's always Mateo de la Oz who wants to be el protagonista, wants to be in the limelight, wants to have the beams shine upon him. And shine bright, they do. They do shine bright on Mateo Ladaoff. El payaso. Uh, I take that back. I take that back. I'm not going to go and criticize Mateo Ladaoff any more than what I just did. But he is just human in the end. And he does surely the best he can. And he maybe saw it in an angle where it wasn't that clear. Okay. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Mateo Ladaoff didn't see Chichi Zola. Smacking that ball away with the left hand. Uh, that was a bummer. That was a bummer for Barca. Uh, we were 1-0 up at that point. Could have been a sending off, like I said, or should have been a sending off. Uh, Leo Messi with a cracking free kick. Okay, an absolute belter that uh, put us up at 1-0. Uh, what is that? How many? I don't know how many. I think it's five free kicks, something like that. 
Leo Messi seems more secure from the free kick spot than the penalty spot. Uh, but what a beautiful free kick to put us up 1-0 in a game that, you know, uh, let me say this as well. I was, I didn't see the first half. I caught it on radio. I finish uh, every day at 10 p.m. Uh, so I was on my bike, biking home like a maniac, uh, well aware of the scoreline, but uh, listening to the radio and making sure that uh, uh, I was getting as much of it as I could. And, and I was, you know, the pundits, my uh, references on the radio, radio commentary, were talking about a bad side that looked lackluster, that looked like they were not really into this game. Um, and I was expecting that. Like I said, I was saying that this partido, this match was era un partido de trampa. It was a tricky match. It was a, a, a match that, in which I could see a, a, a sort of trip up. Okay, But the problem for me wasn't Lauf. Okay, Like I said, it wasn't the fact that Chichisola should have gotten sent off. It shouldn't. It wasn't because of the penalty call and Digne. Uh, it wasn't neither uh, the fact that 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 Barca maybe looked tired. And I'm a little bit, you know, I I can I I take that at heart. I, I mean, I take that with a light heart every time I hear that. It kind of makes me chuckle at this point, saying that Barca looks tired. To me, it's more el esquema. Okay, the scheme, the tactical scheme. It is clear right now, it should be clear to all of us that Valverde is continuing to rely on the 4-4-2, okay? The 4-4-2 scheme that has got, brought us great results, I should say as well, Barca does remain unbeaten despite having dropped another two points, another draw. Barca remains unbeaten and the 4-4-2 is uh, something that has allowed Barca, allowed Valverde to get this team into some sort of a rhythm where they're banging, you know, they're bringing home the results. They're bringing home points every weekend on end. There hasn't been one weekend where we have not conce or, or, uh, conceded a point. No, not conceded a point, no. Uh, consumed a point. Gotten a point, okay? Point to the point. <laughs> um... But the 4-4-2 system does not fit Coutinho or Dembélé. That's also clear. Barca spent, or will have spent, nearly $300 million in two cracks, in two phenomenal players, one potentially in Dembélé, one proven in Coutinho. Uh, but the 4-4-2 system does not count on, or it just basically doesn't fit Coutinho Dembélé. Now, you got to give credit where credit is due, and credit is certainly due with Paco Gemeth and his Las Palmas side, which was organized. They pressured high. Uh, they had a good attitude, something that can be said of Barca. They, had, they came out with the right attitude. They came out and said, Mira, sabes que aquí tenemos dos cojones. Here are our two huevos. We're going to put our huevos on this pitch, and let's see what you got, Barca. Let's see what you got, because we have nothing to lose. All Las Palmas is doing is that they're hoping, they're praying, is that that Levante is continuing, will continue their bad form and salvage themselves and their season and their club and a whole bunch of presupuesto, their next season's budget, by remaining into, in, in La Primera División. So all credit to Paco, Paco Jemez for coming out with, with the perfect game plan on that given day against this Barca side. A Barca side that came off of a Girona win, 6-1, over here in the Camp Nou, a, a match that all of us said, or, or most of us said, you know, let's not let's take this at not, uh, let's take this also with a light heart. Let's not take it at face value because this Girona side <coughs> uh, came out playing the two a two, came out playing one on one, playing came out playing Barca as equals, and a team like Girona that does that might be able to get some sort of result, a prize on a, on, on a, on a, any give, on, on a good given day on their side, on a bad day for Barca. But normally, if you play Barca de tu a tu, sales perdiendo. You will end up losing. And that 6-1 reflected basically the difference in quality and, and budget. Uh, but it was something that, you know, we couldn't all run away and say, this is it, Barca's back, we're going to win everything now, baby. That game was a one-off, and that game is not normally how teams play us. You guys know that. I'm telling you nothing new. 
So credit again to Las Palmas. Um, what I will say, okay, is that I still believe, and I'm going to continue to be optimistic, I still believe that Barca will win this Liga. I still believe that Barca will win on Sunday against Atletico de Madrid. And I will also say, for all you doubters and critics, that no se gana una Liga sin sufrir. You, you don't win a Liga without suffering, guys. Okay, this 16 points, 19 points clear, 14 points clear, 7 points, 10 points clear over your next La Liga rival, 7 points clear, is something unusual. Something even that I think the neutral doesn't want to see. So if anything, let's give it up for La Liga. Let's give it up for the neutral spectator who will be licking their chops. All right, we'll be happy with this. But, uh, I mean, we only need to look back. For all of you guys that like to reference Pep Guardiola, let's go back to 2009. Let's go back to when Real Madrid, the, the, the second in the clasificación, the second in the table, was 12 points clear, or be, excuse me, 12 points behind Barca. But ended up with the possibility of being only one point behind. However, Barca went to the Bernabeu and won a historic, with a historic scoreline of 6-2, okay? That season, 2009, look it up, Google it. Madrid, at some point in time, was 12 points behind Barca, clawed its way back with the possibility in the Clásico to go one point behind. And it was only because of that fantastic game, that, 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 that you know, trend-setting, trend-changing game, historic in all sense of the word, 6-2 it ended on a night that allowed Barca to win La Liga comfortably. I mean, not really comfortably, but with, with an ample scoreline that maybe you wouldn't expect uh, with a team with the quality the likes of Real Madrid, okay? So my point being is that una liga no se gana sin sufrir. You don't win a league without suffering a little bit, okay? And Barca is going to suffer. In fact, what did I say? I said, I say this re repeatedly, and I know, Mohamed, I see you. You're saying... Five points now. Atleti and Barca are five points different. I know. I was saying seven points before. Now it's five. I'm well aware of that. But what I will say is that, um, you know, we're going to lose a match. There will come a time where this team will lose. Whether it's... And we've lost in the Copa del Rey. Espanol showed us. Uh, the Champions League. Most likely, we're not going to win it. You know what I'm saying? Statistics, odds have shown us that the most likely scenario is that neither Barca, nor Man City, nor Real Madrid, okay, most teams, the odds are against. Because that's what it, the, 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 the year after year that Champions League proves. It's, 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 it has a luck factor, you know, many factors that determine who will win. But nothing is cut and dry. Nada is blanco y negro. Nothing is black and white, okay? So we will lose, whether it's in La Liga, Champions League, but... You don't win a league without suffering, guys. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, and I understand the critics. I understand all of you guys that are... I'm not going to go over your questions right now, so bear with me. But all of you guys that are saying, uh, you know, that this Barca side is not showing any heart. Uh, that this Barca shy, uh, side is shite. <laughs> that this Barca side needs to score more goals. It's relying too much on Messi, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Dembele, Coutinho, all those arguments. I hear you. Uh, and I understand the critics, but I'm going to continue to be po uh, pos positive. You don't win titles without suffering. Now, what I will say is, Valverde, and this is my question to you, to Valverde, or to you watching. Uh, why play Dembélé 13 minutes? I understand that the 4-4-2 gives, has given you results, and you're obviously not counting on Coutinho or Dembélé to fit into that system. And that makes sense. They fit better in a 4-4-3. Uh, but why give him 30 min 13 minutes in a match where at that point the Palmas players, Las Palmas players were dropping on the floor, um, you know, were wasting time. You're not really expecting somebody, a player, uh, who, cl who clearly is a player that can open the pitch that I hope will play against Chelsea just to do that, exactly that. A player that that, that has regate, desborde, a player that... that, that can go one on one, open the pitch, stretch out the defenders. Um, not 13 minutes, my man. Not 13 minutes. In my opinion, he's got to play more. 
and let him play more, please, because I'm 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 fearful at this point. I fear it's 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 everything that I feared before Coutinho Dembélé came, and I I've talked about this again. All the you guys, the the D spots loyals and and uh, and uh, excuse the uh, Barça Blaugranes loyals will know that this is something we've talked about on this show many many times. I was scared that right now. Uh, Valverde is in is in preseason mode, and he's trying to he's forced to figure it out an entire new system halfway through the system, halfway through the season. Excuse me. How am I going to fit in Coutinho and Dembélé, two different players all together from everything that I'm used to? And we heard Valverde over the in the press conference just before the match. He had a little dig. He had a little uh, uh, yeah a dig at. Um, and Dembélé, he said Dembélé needs to defend more. Well, Dembélé is not used to defending. He certainly does need to defend more. But that is why it shouldn't be so no surprise if now come Saturday or excuse uh, Saturday, or Sunday, Sunday's kickoff against Atletico, that we won't see Coutinho, we won't see Dembélé, but we will see a full for two with Andre Gomez because that's what he put in the Wanda Metropolitano, and it worked out pretty well. Wasn't that bad? If He's going to stick to a 4-4-2 system that is solid in defense, retaining the ball, getting the ball back quickly. Andre Gomez is my pick to start again. Not that I want him to, but he's my pick to start. Either him or, or, or Paulinho, that's for sure. But Paulinho as well looks like you know his form is dropping a little bit. Ah, what could I say, guys? Am I worried? Yes. Uh, but uh, I'm also optimistic and we're going to remain optimistic, okay? All right, man, 22 minutes. That's me ranting nonstop. Let me go over your questions. Ian Edwards saying, watching from Saudi Arabia. Uh, I was awake only to watch Louth in action, says Niti Gia. Chidi saying, like the sound. Clip on mic. What? It's called a clip on mic. What? Nice one. Happy that the sound is good. Uh, and I'm going to talk about David Garrido and an awesome new project that we are starting uh, very shortly. Uh, Onsuna, Onsuma is saying, Onsun, Onsunama, excuse me, Onsunama, you're saying Barcelona should try their, uh, sorry, Barcelona should try their level best to have more point ahead of Atletico. Atletico. Um, they should try their very best to have out. I'm not sure I get your question, but yes, we should definitely try to field our best players. Uh, drop in your comments. Make sure they're nice and quick and short and clear so I, we can get through them quickly. Mohamed, you're saying, why the hell Barberde did not start, uh, start a strong 11? I think he did. That is his starting, that is his, his strongest 11. That is his strongest 11, Muhammad. That's what we have to realize. Valverde will continue to play the 4-4-2 and will, in my opinion, uh, in my, in my, uh, at least that's what I think, I suspect that Valverde is thinking at this point, is that I will try the 4-4-3 next season. The 4-4-2 <laughs> is one of we're sticking with this season, which has brought me great results until now. And that's the problem because he's got gazillions sitting on the bench that he needs to incorporate because of a lot of pressure and everything, but we'll see. Mira, vamos a ver. Um, by the way, La Liga Lowdown, where can I see it? Nitigia, good question. He's already going to La Liga Lowdown. Nitigia, you're ahead of the game, all right? All right, let me get you guys informed, seeing as Nitigia is asking for it. Uh, La Liga Lowdown, the new project that um, I am part of uh, with Sky Sports is... David Garrido, David Garrido from Sky Sports, presenting La Liga Lowdown. In La Liga Lowdown, we're going to be talking about all things La Liga. It is the brand new home for Spanish football content in English. Insights, interviews, interaction launched on March 1st. Spanish football salted, mate. You're salted for your Spanish football content. All right? It is a fantastic project uh, that, again, in case you don't know who David Garrido is, let me quickly show you. 
He is a Sky Sports presenter. Um, he also presents uh, Revista de la Liga. And here we see our friend David Garrido with Roberto Pires, uh, with Garcia, with Mendieta, with... Hey, you guys know who this guy is? Eh? Look at these two Italian studs with them Italian mobsters as well. Why not? Look at the Italian from Brooklyn. Oh, what? Wait, 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 I'm getting confused. With my, I'm mixing up my accents, but you get what I'm saying. Um, Revista de la Liga is is the Spanish. I mean, the must see, the must go to Spanish football program on Sky Sports. And David said, you know what? I don't have enough with that. I'm going to launch a brand new project. It's called La Liga Lowdown. And the idea is that over here in Spain, we are una plantilla. We're a team of, uh, I think we're four or five periodistas, four or five journalists spread throughout the entire country. Uh, somebody in the nation's capital, in Madrid, somebody up north, east, west, south. I'm over, of course, over in uh, Barcelona. We have somebody down in Valencia as well and Andalusia. And we are all providing content for this platform. Uh, you see the Twitter handle here. Just launched yesterday. Look at that. Already scratching the thousand followers. I mean, this thing is blowing up quick, guys. Get on board because it's awesome. Here we see the first interview. Every day we give a little teaser of what is ahead. Uh, we have interviews lined up. Here we see the interview with Luchito Lucho, the Atletico, Liverpool, and Barca ex-player uh, so check it out guys go over to the youtube channel uh search for la liga lowdown on youtube and give us a follow on la liga lowdown on twitter as well because i know you love spanish football anything that anybody that loves spanish football needs to get on this platform is good for you and it's good for us <laughs> to count on your support um but of course we want to talk about barca as well and talk and see what our fantastic editors over at uh, Barça Blaugranes are writing after this Palma, uh, un Palma, no sé hemos llevado un palo, eso seguro. We, we, the, right, I'm not going to translate these Spanish sayings anymore. You know what I'm talking about. But uh, Valverde here slams invisible penalty after Barcelona draws at Las Palmas. Let's talk about. Laos. Let's talk about the mistakes, all right? I know Jill Clark was keen to discuss this. Our fantastic site manager here making reference to what Valverde was saying after the match. We don't know what the referee blew for during that play, Valverde is saying. Nobody knows in the dressing room. In that phase <coughs> of play, we don't understand what he blew. It was inexplicable. We hope that his decision will become a little clearer when we see the replay. It was an invisible penalty. For me, it was clear. It was really clear that Chichizola, uh, the, the, the Chichizola handball, I would imagine that Jemez saw it differently. Of course, everybody will want to see what they see, what they would like to see. Uh, look, couldn't agree more, of course, with Valverde. The handball... I thought it was a very, very tough decision. I know that the, the Madridistas or, you know, anti barcelonistas or maybe some neutrals will say, hey, Diego, what about uh, Iniesta? What about the Iniesta handball? Well, for me, the Iniesta handball was not a handball, guys. Okay? We're going to go talk about it here. Look at Barca. El Barça es indigna con Mateo de la Oz. Uh, con Mateo la Oz. Uh, Barca is... Uh, uh, Indigna, coño, uh, is, uh, joder, ¿cómo se dice? Indignarse, uh, is, uh, bueno, no sé, uh, I'm a little, I'm not as fresh as I usually am, okay? Like I said, one and a half hours of sleep last night, guys, um, is basically, is, is ashamed, no, but is, is upset, okay? Barça is upset, uh, with Laoz for the various, um, Mistakes that he made, of course, <clears throat> making reference to Chichizola, should have uh, been uh, expulsado, should have gone and sent off. Let me, let's see if we can have a quick look of some of the match highlights here. Uh, here we see Chichizola 
the big mistake. Get down, boing. She, she thought I playing handball. That's about we play some handball. Alf is like, what? I, I didn't see nothing. Toma ya. I'm going to play this with the hand because my name is Chichi Zola. We don't see Valverde very often upset, but there he is giving Laoth a mouthful. And he, well done for him. Okay, look, let's partake in this little quiz here, okay? Marca's asking, should Chichi Zola have been sent off for the handball outside of the area? I'm going to say a big fat C. And 72% of the readers agree. Oh, why they did. Now, did Mateo Laoz, was he correct for conceding a penalty to Las Palmas for uh, Dinez handball, they say here? I'm going to say it wasn't a handball, at least not deliberately. I'm going to say no, he was not correct. And of the nearly 14,500 votes, 61% agree with me. Now, Oh, 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 they're going to talk about Iniesta here. Okay, let's look at Iniesta's handball for all of you peoples that want to see Iniesta's supposed handball. Again, for me, that was it was not deliberate uh, and should not have been counted as a handball. So, in that sense, yes, Mateo Lao finally was correct in point. Come on, man. Come on, man. You're going to call penalty for that? I mean, Iniesta's not even... I mean, even Lao is laughing. Iniesta's not even, you know, a meter away... He's got arms to his side. He's, he's, he's trying to cover his face. He's looking away. He's looking away. He doesn't see where the ball is going. And you guys are claiming that that is a penalty. I'm going to say, Debio Pitar, shoot Mateo de la Oz, call the penalty in Iniesta's uh, action. I'm going to say, hell no. Of the nearly 13,000 votes, oh my God, almost 60%, 59% say that he should have. Okay, oh, and then let's talk, I'm happy about this, Marca. Thank you, Marca, for talking about the expulsion. Galvez here should have definitely, in my opinion, gotten a red card for that absolutely inexplicable patada, uh, the kick to Messi. Uh, let's see here again, if you guys didn't see that. Look at that, look at that. Boom! Oh, my days! La off! Eh, I'll just give you a yellow, okay? Jesus Christ. Galvez! Scandalous, scandalous. Has no chance of playing the ball, no chance whatsoever. But he, Mlaoth, watching that clearly, thinks, ah, yellow it is. And we saw Pique as well after the match, wanting to give Mlaoth a mouthful of his thoughts. Ah, se quedó con las ganas because he was pushed away. But guys, 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 guys. Man, 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 oh man. Some indespicable decisions for sure. But I'm going to stick to what I said before. Uh, I'm going to stick to what I said. And that is that, mira, Laoz estuvo mal. Laoz was bad, but Barca was worse. Okay. Uh, so let's go over a couple of more of your questions and uh, of our fine articles that our editors wrote after the match. Uh, Rutuj saying, Carrera contra Cantera. I think you mean... Uh, uh, cartera, which means wallet, uh, but yeah, okay. You're a Madridista, obviously. <laughs> Rutush, it's great to see you on this chat. I like Madridistas coming on this chat. Uh, I, it's a, a funny saying, cartera contra cantera. Now, apparently Madrid has the cantera. Rutush, please tell me who are canteranos in Madrid. You guys buy... Just as many, if not way more players than Barca. So please. Okay, please. Uh, hola, Di Pupur saying, Pupur saying, Mina should have played instead of Hermanen. Eh, that's debatable. I don't think Hermanen had a bad game. Nitiga saying, then why did we play against Girona with Coutinho and Dembele? We can play with both of them. Look, again, that is, uh, and I'm, I'm happy, Nitiga, that you brought this up. That was, like I said previously, that was a match, uh, an exceptional match. We will not find many matches like that in this season, okay? The rest of the season. That was an exceptional match where basically we didn't allow us to draw any conclusions other than the fact that if a team comes out and plays the 2 at 2 if a team comes out and plays one-on-one, -on -one, wants to play football, wants to play offensive, possession-minded football, then Barca is absolutely will outclass uh, uh, you know, most of the competition by a very large margin, but that will not happen. That will not happen. Uh, 
That is why I was, my point is that the 4-4-2 does not count or shouldn't count or cannot count on Coutinho Dembele at this point because they are not trained in that system yet. They, have, they need more time to adapt. Please give them more time, I also will say. Has is saying has. Suarez out. Luis Suarez. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. Has Gaddafi, please, man. Please. I'm not going to even entertain that uh, another second. Ashakid is saying, hope La Liga will interview Lauf and destroy him. Okay, take it easy. Take it easy. Okay, no need to destroy nobody, but it does baffle me that Lauf will go to the World Cup. That I will say that. Um, all right, let's let me have a, a, a little quick uh, look, a little more uh, at what our editors are writing about. Okay, I'm, I'm on 36 minutes, so I'm way over my usual time. Paco Jimenez saying, "I felt there were two head balls during Las Palmas versus Barça." Right. Controversy over uh, at Las Palmas were Barcelona robbed. All right, let's have a look. Who wrote this fine article on the Barça Blaugranes platform? Make sure you give us a good old follow on our Twitter account in case you haven't already. Who else other than our fantastic site manager, Jill Clark, writing this one, talking about Chichi Thola's handball? We covered it. We covered all the controversies. Uh, uh, Galvez, the red card, of course. So, not going to cover that too much again. Um, quick match review written by Bastian. Bastian, one of our loyal, longtime editors, with the match review as well. Let's see if I can get a destacado here. Barça were shockingly. Inexplicably, embarrassingly, feel free to use any other similar word held to a 1-0 draw by relegation-threatened Las Palmas. Leo Messi opened the scoreline with a free kick in the first half with Jonathan Cagliari providing the end result early in the second from a penalty kick. Well, not much more to add there at this moment in time. Take it as you want. Um... And like I said, I understand the critics. This is this was not Barca's best game, far from it. Um, but I'm going to continue to remain optimistic, guys. Okay, uh, I'm also going to end the broadcast. <laughs> so, as per usual, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for your comments. Give La Liga a lowdown, a follow, and a sub at the uh, on their YouTube channel. While you're at it, for the Barça Blaugranes guys on their platform, go over to my YouTube channel as well and give it a subscribe. We recently hit the 1,000, the 1K mark, 1,000 subscribers. I'm now over 1,000. It's been a year in the making. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you all for your loyal support. I know you guys want more videos, and I do them. This is a stressful week, so I was waiting for this midweek action to come for this week's Barça Blaugranes slash D-Spot episode. So do be patient with me. There is more content coming over at La Liga Lowdown, over at Barça, over at D-Spot, over at Barça Blaugranes. Uh, of course, I work, I study, I do a master. So bear with me. I try to do as much as I can anytime possible. So uh, make sure you subscribe to the platforms. Give me a follow at um, on my Twitter as well. When you do subscribe, make sure you click that also important notifications button so you know when I go live, which is very spontaneously as you guys see. Okay, guys? Esto es todo. Thank you, Barça Blaugranes, for all your attention. Thank you guys on D-Spot for all your questions as well. I wish you guys a beautiful, beautiful Friday. It's weekend. Let's put our weekend phases up, okay? Let's be happy. We are still unbeaten, still top of La Liga, still fighting for everything Copa del Rey, Champions League, and La Liga trophies. El triplete is still possible. So let's be optimistic, guys. Nothing is lost yet, so pump your brakes. This is now crunch time, guys. This is now crunch time. And Barca needs our support, okay? We need, it needs our optimism, needs our support. Now more than ever. Así que nada. 
hasta la próxima Vizca al Barça and you already know what's next. It's the outro, this time with a little more sound. Boosh!